Titans. Gives it a nice ride there. He will have that left for birdie. Gives us the opportunity to check in with the third member of our broadcast team and a three-time winner on the PGA no, Tour. Billy Ray Brown is with Daniel Negreanu. All right, Joe, thanks a lot. And Daniel, you and Eric have got something really special going on today. You played well in the front nine, and everything seems to be going quite nicely right now. Yeah, I don't know if we played well in the front nine. <laughs> my back, I have a lot of faith and confidence in my partner, but right now my back's getting a little heavy. Yeah, you, the, yeah you made two birdies on the par threes on the front nine to really put your group in a great position position try to win this championship yeah he's he's definitely the ace of the group but today you know he's put a lot of pressure on me and a lot of in a lot of holes and i'm trying my best i'm fighting i like pressure which is good but it would be nice to just have him just walk down the course and you know never being he's been like plugged he's been on a card path i mean yeah. he's had some really bad luck too so hopefully we can just get to four under i think that's what we need to do and i feel like we can this is gonna be a tough hole for us though well i'm sure our viewers at home would like to know the, the similarities between playing poker and playing golf what is it to you oh it's unbelievable right now i'm fighting so hard i'm fighting like i'm a short stack in a poker tournament and I'm just not ready to quit. I'm not ready to die. I don't care where I am. I don't care if I'm in a rock. I don't care if I have to take the shoes off and go barefoot and I'm going I'm to hit it. You know, I can tee it up from anywhere. So I'll tee it up from the water if I have to. All right, Daniel. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Joe, back to you. Thanks, BR. And Mike Sexton, I know you can relate to that feeling he's talking about being that short stack situation and having to be aggressive out on the golf course. Among our leaders, John Hansen. This for Eagle on 11. Oh, it's got a chance. Yeah. Wow, wow, what a putt by John Hansen. John Hansen. He's very well respected among gamblers. He's a gambler's gambler. Well, he is. That risk paid off there, Mike. Well, I got to tell you, Joe, all the players in the field consider the team of John Hansen and Mickey Outman to be the chum for the Sharks in this tournament. What's happened, though, is that the fish have become the fishermen here. Took a big bite out of that leaderboard. They are now four under. Two strokes ahead of Ivy and Oppenheim. Here is Phil Ivy for birdie. Oppenheim missed his birdie attempt. This to cut the lead to one stroke. Ivy for bird. Wow, both players missing from a short distance here. That hurts. Phil Ivy so disappointed there on 11. But again, really? so they stay far? at two under. Two strokes behind Mickey Appleman and John Hansen, who had that sensational eagle. Well, here's the team with some momentum right now. Doyle Brunson here on 13 for Bird. Wrong all this time. You just didn't have no Oh, two in a row for Texas Dolly. That's three out of four holes to start this back nine. They have Birdie, and they now are plus one as we look at our leaderboard with the team of Mickey Appleman and John Hansen at four under. It was moments ago, John Hansen at 11, the Eagle, more to come. The biggest bet that I have made on the golf course is probably a $100,000 Nassau. I lost $900,000 one day playing golf, and I've won about five or 600000 in one day playing golf. <laughs> Easter Sunday this year, I'm embarrassed to tell you, I, I, you're supposed to be in church or home with your family. I was playing golf. I lost a million four. David Gray, my partner, one day I, I bet him I could do four rounds in one day. I mean, the guy's six foot seven. He bet he could do a standing backflip and land on his feet. And he did it. He's played five rounds of golf in one day in 115 degrees. I have a lot of crazy weight loss bets that have involved me being in a hot tub in 108 degree heat to try to lose weight. Well, I once had a bet with Phil Helmuth that I had to float in the ocean for 24 hours. It's dangerous what we do. It's dangerous. I mean, uh, I went home one time, told my wife I lost our car. Have you ever heard that thing, easy come, easy go? And that's what happens. I'm not afraid to bet my money. Sometimes I didn't have any money to bet a million dollars on something. I continually make dumb bets. But I'm getting older and hopefully a little smarter. The amount of these young guys have got all this money. They brought me out of retirement, really. I went out there one day and I seen how they played and how much they bet. And I said, i got to get my game in shape. <laughs> Makes you wonder if you could survive a Vegas weekend with that group, doesn't it? Hey, here's the prize money breakdown. $2.25 million purse. Nine teams. They've ended up a quarter million dollars each. The winners will take home over $1.1 million. And as for the rules... It's gambler's rule, we call them. Uh, I think there's no limit on the clubs you can have. I mean, I carry about eight wedges. I can't hit no half shots. <laughs> so I just carry one for every five or six yards. <laughs> you know, you have to play the ball where it is. I mean, we hit them off with cart pads, mud puddles. Uh, if you touch the ball, it's a stroke penalty. 
You gotta have grease because you hit this further and straighter. The worse you are, the better grease helps you. Actually, they're the best rules there are. And Mike Sexton, prime example earlier, Vince Van Patten. Well, here Vince with a plug lie, but this is the beauty of gambler's rules. You never get to touch the ball anywhere. It's the same for everybody. You just play it wherever it goes. Get up, get up, roll in. Wow, really what a shot rolling. by Vince right yeah. there. Made the most of yeah. that. Great shot, Vinny. Plug all the lies. Hey, I was going to say, what do you need to drop it for? Butch Holmes on 13 for birdie. Oh. Well, it's been that yeah. kind of day, hasn't it, Mike? Well, it has been. Butch Holmes really struggling today and thought to be one of the clear favorites. Here is David Oppenheim now. His second shot on 12. He's playing this hill perfectly here, looks like. All going to roll right down to the flag. Should help out Oppenheim and Ivy, who trail Appleman and Hanson by two strokes. Our Billy Ray Brown is with this group. His playing partner, Joe, so close to the hole. This is obviously a green light situation for Phil Ivy. 123 yards all the way to the flag stick. A little hurting breeze. Slightly uphill lie in the fairway. Oppenheim took some of the pressure off. Let's see what Ivy can deliver here. Well, caught that ball just a bit heavy. Tried to muscle it up on the green. Kind of looked like he had little hands on the steering wheel there, trying to steer it up there. But all is not lost. Great shot by his partner. He's known as one of the best poker players in the world, but it didn't start that way for Phil Ivy, as he explains in our small blind. When I first started playing poker, I played 16 hours a day for around for five years. I was a telemarketer in New Jersey, so basically I just used that as a way to play poker. Whatever money I made there, I went down to Atlantic City and played poker, or craps of blackjack and everything else, until so finally I didn't have to go back to work. There's plenty of work still ahead of them if they want to catch John Hansen and Mickey Appleman. This is John Hansen's second shot on 12. His partner, Mickey Appleman, missed the green long. Well, he's down this far because he hits the ball a long ways and he gets the super red tees, as does his partner, Mickey Appleman. And, Joe, those tees are about 100 yards in front of the ladies' tees. Big handicap advantage for Hanson hitting from the super reds. He can also use a tee from anywhere on the course up ahead at 14. 60-year-old Dewey Tomko. He's played in every World Series of Poker main event since 1974. It's the longest active streak. And here... Hoping to start a new tradition. He's actually hit the ball very well all day long. Just hasn't putted well at all. But 14 yeah. treats him well. <laughs> Side door for Dewey. I don't guess six to put it. Well, that's four birdies and five yeah. holes for these guys. They're on a roll. They said for me not to put. I gotta go. Turned their day around after what was a near disastrous front nine. Tomko and Brunson in good shape. Back to 12. John Hansen. This for Bird. He's actually putted very well today, especially considering he seven putted a hole in the practice round on day one here. So they'll take the par, maintain their lead at four under. Billy Walters, hey, he owns the course. He owns Bally High. Well, he's got all the local knowledge you need, that's for sure. It is, it is. Well, this is not a typical Billy Walters kind of day, Mike. Well, you're right little about little that, there. Joe. Typically, this is the guy most high-stakes gambler really fear on the golf course. Par for Billy Walters, who has spent $145 million on four courses in this town. To 12, and David Oppenheim. Phil Ivey has bogeyed, so this is critical for Oppenheim. Straight back down the hill, moving a little bit left to right. Cross-handed approach in his putting. So unable to gain ground is Oppenheim and Ivey. Pars for both of our leaders. Appleman and Hansen still out in front at four under. And look who's making a move. Tomko and Brunson now even. Before the first ball was struck, the competitors were treated to a night out at one of Vegas's trendiest restaurants and clubs, Tao, located.